commercial poultry industry has grown considerably over the past few years. This increase in size and complexity of poultry operations, including breeders, broilers and layers, has forced managers to focus more on the efforts of disease control. Emergence of new diseases and variants of existing diseases are more common. Genetic changes of microorganisms as well as genetic changes in commercial birds can alter susceptibility or resistance to diseases. Global trading and traveling makes it even more challenging to limit disease transmission between different regions or areas. The word biosecurity refers to various management practices that should be implemented and followed strictly to reduce the potential of introduction of disease or spread of disease agents onto or across a poultry site. Disease outbreaks are costing poultry producers and related industries millions of rands in lost revenue yearly. In order to minimize these losses, integrated methods should not only be implemented on paper, but an effort should be made to actually follow these procedures daily by all persons working, visiting or staying on the site. Biosecurity is one of the most effective and cheapest methods of disease prevention. Without the implementation of biosecurity, no other disease prevention will function optimally. It is therefore important that the biosecurity program should be practical and easily understood by everyone in the company and consistently followed. We will be discussing the most important integrated procedures to be followed on commercial poultry farms in order to control, limit and prevent disease spreading. Several continuous standard procedures should be implemented on an ongoing basis to prevent pathogens establishing themselves on the site and the spread of infection within the site in order to maintain good flock health. Access control Movement of people, birds, eggs, feed and equipment are all potential vectors for the spreading and introduction of pathogens within or between farms. Humans are directly and indirectly responsible for introduction and spread of disease, mainly because of movement, curiosity, lack of knowledge and negligence. For this reason, access control at facilities is of great importance. Access to poultry flocks should be limited and unnecessary entrance to these facilities should be strictly prohibited. If possible, the site should be fenced with a controlled entry point. Regular inspections should be done on the fences and repairs should be given immediate attention. Access gates to the farm and poultry facilities should always be locked and only authorized staff should be allowed to enter. A contact number should be displayed on locked gates in order for visitors to first contact the farm to arrange access if necessary. Having a security guard at the gate can also be beneficial to control access. Keeping a logbook to document all persons entering is a good method to control people and vehicle traffic. This should contain the date, name of visitor, reason for visit and information on visiting previous poultry farms and poultry facilities visited by persons entering. All visitors like veterinarians, technical advisors, washing crews, vaccinating and catching crews should always adhere to the biosecurity measures of the poultry site. In cases of disease, outbreaks, for example Newcastle disease, farm visits should be avoided and only the necessary staff should be allowed on the farm. Mechanical transmission occurs when objects, also called fomites, carry pathogens or disease-causing organisms that survives without multiplication. Vehicles can act as mechanical vectors and should be decontaminated upon entrance. In order to lower the level of microorganisms on vehicles, an approved disinfectant should be used at the correct concentration in spray or dip systems. If possible, do not use the same vehicles for transporting birds, feed, manure or other waste material. Work crews and repairmen have to enter the site from time to time. These people are also at great risk for spreading disease as they travel between farms daily. Do not move materials or equipment unnecessarily between different sites or farms. Equipment or materials should be sanitized outside the facility if possible. Washing crews must clean their equipment, especially the pumps and hoses. 
Catching crews must arrive on the farm with clean crates that were washed and properly disinfected at the processing plant. Farm personnel can also be trained to do most of the on-farm repairs. Clothes, footwear, hair and hands can spread infection. And it is of great importance to implement procedures in order to lower the risk of pathogen transport by these factors. If possible, showers supplied with antimicrobial soap should be available for all visitors, personnel and work crews entering the site. A shower in, shower out principle should be followed. Clean overalls and footwear must be provided by the farm or facility and should be warm upon entering. Protective clothing and footwear should be removed and either cleansed and disinfected, laundered or disposed of after use. Foot baths should be provided at all entrances of different sites and houses. This should contain an appropriate disinfectant at the correct concentration. The type of disinfectant should be effective in the presence of organic material, as gumboots tend to carry organic material and litter on the soles. It is also beneficial to have a brush available to manually clean these boots in order to get rid of this organic material regularly before stepping into the foot bath. The content of the foot bath should be changed regularly, at least every one to three days, depending on the amount of dirt it contains. All staff, managers and visitors should make use of foot baths every time they enter or exit the building. Foot baths should also be thoroughly cleaned at the end of every cycle. It is of great benefit to have the necessary signs at the specific locations to remind people to decontaminate their footwear. Hand washing facilities should be available on location to encourage frequent washing. Use an effective product that has antimicrobial properties but doesn't dry out the skin or cause irritation. A hand sanitizer should be available at all entrances. This is normally an alcohol-based gel or liquid that is used to sanitize clean hands without the need for the availability of water and a basin. Always make sure that there is enough of the product available and that the applicator is in a working condition so that there is no excuse not to make use of it. This is especially important to sanitize hands after handling mortalities or live birds or when collecting fertile eggs on the breeder farms. Personnel Hygiene Proper decontamination procedures should be followed by all staff members. This includes previously mentioned measures such as access control, vehicle sanitation, in and out showering, foot bath usage and hand washing and sanitizing. Ablution facilities should be available and warm water, appropriate antimicrobial shower gel and hand soap should be available. These facilities should be kept tidy and cleaned and disinfected regularly. It is important that lock-up facilities are available for staff members in order to store their personal belongings and clothes. Staff must be provided with protective clothing and footwear and these should stay on site and not be allowed to be taken to their houses or outside the premises. Overalls should be washed regularly and gumboots should be scrubbed at the end of every shift with a detergent disinfectant. Eating, drinking or smoking inside houses and facilities should be prohibited. Employees should be cautious about contact with backyard poultry and pet birds. These birds can be an asymptomatic carrier of pathogens and potential transmission between the employees' homes and workplace could be a risk. It is therefore important that staff, managers and supervisors are not allowed to keep backyard poultry or pet birds. Visiting neighboring farms by employees should be prohibited, even though flocks appear to be healthy. An ongoing employee training program should be implemented to keep staff members educated on disease prevention and control techniques. Proper training should be given on how to use these products and the reason for these measures should be explained. Decontamination procedures should also be followed when personnel attend group meetings or seminars, especially grouping of staff members from different sites and houses. Showering and change of clothing and footwear before and after attending a group meeting is essential. Vehicles should also be properly disinfected after every journey. Biological transmission Biological transmission occurs when the pathogen multiplies in the affected host or vector and is then transmitted to susceptible poultry. Wild birds can carry poultry diseases. 
It is critical to minimize contact between poultry and wild birds. Prevent accumulation of standing water and remove spilled feeds that could attract wild birds. The use of untreated surface water, for example, river or dam water, can be a source of infection. Wild waterfowl can be asymptomatic carriers of pathogens and they can contaminate uncovered water sources. Feed and water supplies of free-range birds should be kept indoors where possible to reduce mixing between the flock and wild birds. Buildings should also be maintained and made wild bird-proof to ensure they don't nest or roost in them. Keep grass short around the houses and remove bird nests. Multi-age farms also carry the risk of disease transmission between different ages of birds. It is therefore critical to limit workers specifically to a particular house and not moving between different aged flocks. Insect and fly control. Insects also act as biological vectors of disease. Controlling them is a complex but critical task which can be handled successfully by following an integrated approach. Insects that cause great concern in disease transmission in poultry are flies, litter beetle, mosquitoes, and foul ticks. Insects, especially flies, can have a significant impact on public health, hygiene, and productivity. Large numbers have a negative effect on growth and performance of most farm animals. Domestic flies and beetles are capable of transmitting pathogens through the contamination of eggs and larva. Poultry can become harassed, and this can lead to several negative factors like reduced feed intake drop in egg production and downgrading of egg quality. All these factors can lead to economic losses. Maggots also have a negative impact by liquefaction of manure that leads to the release of ammonia. This can cause an increase in respiratory diseases, increased corrosion and therefore lead to increased ventilation costs. It is important to follow an integrated approach to reduce and control infestation on farms and in other poultry facilities. This will include cultural or physical control, biological, mechanical, and chemical control. Physical control. Management of manure, feed, and facilities are a very important factor when managing especially fly infestation. Proper litter and manure removal and treatment play an essential role in fly control. It is important to keep manure moisture below 30-50% as this is less suitable for fly breeding purposes. Practical points include daily inspection for water leaks, prevention of running water from outside to inside, proper insulation of water lines and frequent removal of manure. Other aspects include abundant ventilation in the manure pit, removal of mortalities daily, removal of spilled feed and eggs to keep grass short around the house to restrict adult flies from resting on these sites. Manure drying is especially important to control fly populations in caged layer operations as manure is accumulating over long periods. Biological control. This is a natural way of fly control that encourages the survival and buildup of beneficial predators and parasites, for example mites, wasps and hyster beetles.